Hi there, today I'm going to tie a nymph and this is not going to be your ordinary nymph, this is going to be one where I, where I do some pretty neat tricks with the body. First of all it's important to have uh, some, uh, some tying thread along the hook shank here. I'm using a curved nymph hook here and this is uh, size 10 uh, and this is just to make it easier for all of you to, to see what I'm doing. So basically now I have uh, all of this. This is going to be a bit more difficult one. And, uh, and if, you, um, if, if you need the material list and stuff like that, simply click under here or, or go to the end of the video. You will find a full material list or, or a link to, to the full material list. Uh, first of all, I'm going to use some of these. These are goose bites. I'm going to use them in brown. We're going to use... Uh, the four pairs of these, uh, but I'm going to take two first for, for the tails. It's it's a very nice material for um, for a lot of different stuff, but especially for, for, for these types of flies here. So, I'm going to tie these in so they're pointing backwards with their tip backwards, and these are going to be the tails of this, uh, of this stone fly nymph. And of course, uh, uh, adjust them so they have the right length according to what hook size you're using. But this nymph is not going to be ideal for 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 smaller uh, smaller sizes. This is a, a, a larger stone fly nymph because we're gonna we're gonna do the body in a certain way uh, that that requires that this has some size in order to at least to use the material I'm using here in this video, um, uh, like so. And there you have, you know, a nice uh, divided tail. Cut off these. Like that. And then I'm going to take some vinyl rib. Uh, this material. And I'm going to take it and uh, use some in brown and in green. And the order of which you tie this down is fairly important because uh, otherwise you will end up not having having uh, the the right stuff on top and the right stuff on the bottom. You can change that, I think, but uh, but uh, uh, you take the uh, the green one and then you tie it down on the side here, and it's important that it's on the side. And the easiest way to do that is simply to take it and then put it on the thread like so, because then you can place it exactly. I'm going to show you a bit more from from above, so you can see a bit bit better. Like so, because I can place it exactly where I want it when I have it doubled on the on the tying thread. So I'm going to have mine placed, not there, you know, because... <laughs> and, and you need the longer part of this to be pointing backwards. If you are having trouble, you can simply just pull it one whole time through, like so. And then I'm going to have it right there. I think I need to adjust this, like so. So now it's it's uh, it's completely on the side, and I'm gonna leave the 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 other end here, out in the front because we we will need that as well. Then I'm gonna take the brown one if I can locate it. Here it was, and I'm gonna tie it opposite, so so it's gonna be on the other side of this. This is actually a way of tying that was invented by uh, by a very cool Norwegian woman called Toril Kulbo. She was pretty awesome. Uh, I hope she's still pretty awesome, but I haven't heard, you know, we have, haven't seen any fly tying stuff from her in, in a long, long time. So basically now I make sure that this is on the sides of the fly, because I need to have the fly broad, not high. So it's important that when you tie this down, you make sure it is on each side of the hook here, like so. Uh, as you as you go along up the up the hook, um, as I said, this this requires a a bit of careful maneuvering and stuff like that. This pattern, but the end result is 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 truly truly awesome. It looks really 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 nice. Like that. pull them down when I get up here like so and then I do not want to go all the way up uh, to the to the top of this I just want it to be I need to have room for for the carapace Ugh, I need to do it a bit further down like this so and then I will continue up here along the hook shank Ah, 
around one third you will want to have for for the for the for the for the carapace part this is uh, teasing me a bit I'm sorry about that so like so you have uh, them uh, tied down on the side here like this and uh, and now what you do is, is you now you cut these off leave them and in order to give this fly the correct taper the the, the correct taper on, on the body uh, we need to add a bit more stuff and uh, if, if you don't want to mess around with with adding extra weight or something like that you can simply just pull the uh, pull the uh, the vinyl rib back but I want to add a bit more weight so I'm gonna take some uh, I'm gonna take some uh, some uh, some non lead wire or lead wire whatever you have and then I'm gonna tie this on the sides as well to give this more bulk you can use tungsten sheets and stuff or tungsten sheep sheet or something like that as well but this is going to make my fly uh, broader the profile is going to be broader here but I do not want this all the way down so actually I'm going to take a fairly cheap scissor and then I'm going to cut it off uh, like so so that it's only maybe one th uh, one half of the body that is broader and and one half of this body that is uh, that is uh, that is only from the uh, from where I, I where I, I uh, tied down the, the vinyl rib. And of course, since this is going to have to be uniform, I'm going to do exactly the same on the other side. So again, I'm going to take some of this. And, uh, and I tripled it. This is 0 0.15, but uh, depending on the size and stuff like that, you, you might want to double or triple or, or uh, depending on, on the fly. So, so as I said, this is not the easiest fly in the world, but it really, really is, is a shiner. It looks quite, quite good. I'm going to do that on my side as well like that make sure to cut off at the same the same place as you did the other thing on the other side like so and now comes the fun part so now I'm fairly fairly pleased with the result as you can see it's it's broader up here than it is further down and uh, and then I'm gonna make a whip finish because now I need to do uh, do the neat trick with the uh, I don't know what it's called in English uh, knitting I think knitting yeah probably knitting so in order to do that what you need to do is is first you need to take the two different colors and then you need to make an ordinary knot you know like that and uh, and if you do it like I have done with the let me just see how that looks. That is not exactly how I want it to be. Why is that? Hmm. I'm gonna do it on the on the underside. So so you take these two and you make an ordinary knot like this, and then you have the start of the fly. Then uh, because I want the brown to be on top here, I take the green one and then I make a loop and make it go uh, just just under here and then I take the brown one over and into into the green loop like so and then what this does is actually making the start of the body looks very much like the carapace uh, or, or of, of the fly so you yeah, get the brown and then again I take the the always the the green one the olive one and put it underneath the hook shank so I get kind of like a loop here and then I take the the brown one and put it over the hook into the loop over the hook into the loop and you will see for sure if you're doing this properly then I take all of this and make sure that everything is is right back at, uh, at the starting point and again I take the green one under to make the loop and the brown one over into the loop and then simply rinse and repeat this process all the way up here 
make sure that everything goes where it's it's supposed to and that you do not, do not have too many gaps again under the green one the green one under and then the brown one over and into the loop the green one under the brown one over and into the loop The green one under, the brown one over, and into the loop. <laughs> yeah, as I said, this can be a bit, this is a bit of a, you know, it's a process that you, you have to do. Then the green one under, under the hook, over the brown, under the hook, over the brown. So you have the loop, and then the brown, over the green, and into the loop. Now I'm at that point where I have the, the junction, so, so my, my body is going to be thicker now. Over the hook and into the loop. This will make the, as, as you can see, this will make the, the brown come out on top and the green one underneath which kind of make a very very cool effect and on the sides you will have, on the sides of this you will have a very very cool pattern uh, of this. So, green one underneath the hook, and over and above the brown, then the brown over the green, into the loop. Like so. And now it's, uh, I'm at the, at the place where, where this gets broader. So, green under, brown over. It's a nice technique, and you can use this for a ton of different uh, different materials and and a ton of different styles of flies. But what this really does is, uh, as as soon as you master this, this is going to be fairly fairly more easy. Uh, the the progression of this is is going to be easier. The more times you've done this, the faster it will go. Um, I'm a bit rusty. I just made uh, one uh, one practice attempt, and probably otherwise this has been. I don't know. At least at least fifteen years since I attempted, uh, since I've, I've I've made a fly like this. But but it's a cool technique and uh, and it's something that I really uh, I've, I've wanted to sh to show off for for some time. And I think I can do one last time here, then over and into the loop like so. Like that. Then I'm gonna at attach my thread once more. Like that. And I see I need to adjust the. Like that. And once you've done this, simply cut off the the, the thread here. And then make sure that this is very very fast and very securely. Then pull forward on this and then tie this down because we'll not need this anymore we only needed this for for the uh, for the segmented body part like that cut away that stuff and then on to building the rest of the fly first of all as you can see brown on top with with the with the nice and shiny green ones and the, then the, the green ones underneath really looks awesome Like that. Good. So um, what I'm doing now is, is I need some dubbing. I'm going to take some brown dubbing for this uh, because I need to make a small bulge here, small bulge here in order to have uh, have uh, the next of the uh, of the uh, of the, that's going to imitate the, the the legs of this, the next of the goose bats uh, to to have have uh, something to 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 be located on in order for them not to to you know be too erratic uh, uh, looking to, to not sticking out too erratic from uh, from the hook here so basically i take two of these again and again i tie them down so they are pointing backwards with the tips backwards this should not be as long as the body maybe preferably half the length of the body something like that 
And as you can see now, I've not tied in enough dubbing because this sticks out too erratically. So I'm just going to leave it, take a bit more dubbing. Uh, some nice, uh, some nice natural dubbing with some uh, some coarser hairs and stuff like that is ideal for this. And and that's a good part of this. It's it's if if you know what you're doing, if you have if you know the tricks, you can you can easily make this fly look look very very well. Uh, simply just apply some dubbing uh, here and there, and uh, and uh, that will that will go a long way, in order to accomplish uh, making this fly look uh, look look great. This is something you should attempt if if you want to try something that is is fun to tie and and is a bit more realistic than than a lot of other stuff, um, like so. There you have them sticking out uh, in the in the in the in the right ankle in the ankle I prefer. So basically, just cut the, tie these down, cut them off like that. And then I need a feather, and you can use a partridge feather, or this is uh, this is uh, some whiting brahma, uh, which is uh, very very nice feathers, especially suited for 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 the purpose I am here. And these are going to be the legs of the of this nymph. So I take one of these feathers out here, strip all the uh, the crap from uh, from uh, from the lower part, and because this is going to be turned last, then it's the first thing I need to tie on here. So basically, I prepare it by 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 having pulled not off, but but so they point backwards. And then I tie this so the underside of the feather. See, this is the top side, the side that is broad, that is the, the most vivid in color. I tie it so the underside of this feather is pointing upwards, because then when I turn this over, it will it will uh, it will be correctly placed. That's kind of like an important detail. Like so. So so when I turn this over, the feathers will be uh, correctly placed and look a lot like legs. Cut off that. I don't need that anymore. Then we're going to take some pheasant tail. Uh, just a bundle of uh, of ordinary plain pheasant tail. You can use colored ones for for this. That would be would be nice. Maybe a nice olive or, or a nice brown or something like that. And uh, and these are very very nice for making uh, making uh, making the the thorax, the wing case. So basically, I'm going to tie these down again uh, in the same place as as I did with the with the hackle here. Cut off all these stumps. I don't need those like that. And then I'm going to do a bit of dubbing. Just to cover up all the mess I've made and, and the tying thread and stuff like that. Again, here be careful not to make this too bulky because that is not going to look good. So basically, just just apply small amounts of dubbing at a time uh, in order to to cover your tracks and make and and cover your tying thread like so. And now, before I go all the way up to to the eye, I want to add another. A pair of of uh, of the legs, and I want to add some uh, some feelers out in front of the fly as well. So basically, I take is that the correct place? Yeah, that is the correct place. I'm going to take a bit more dubbing here. Oh, my tying thread is annoying me. It seems to have come underneath itself. And that can get quite annoying, like so. And then I take if well, actually we need four now, four of these goose bites. Just gonna put them down there. I'm gonna take two, one on each side to be legs. Like that. If it should, ideally, you should have uh, three of these as legs. But I'm not going to do that. That's going to be too much of a too much trouble, and and it's it's going to be too crowded up here. And now, what it looks like from above is this. If I can hold this out to the side, you can you can see the legs here coming out. I'm going to cut off 
this one and that one. We don't need those anymore. And uh, to top it all off, I'm going to give this eyes and I'm going to use uh, beat chain eyes for this. Yeah, as I said, this is a bit more difficult than a lot of the other stuff I've done, but uh, but it really is it really is a, it's a cool cool uh, cool uh, fly. And uh, oh, oh, before I do that, I need of course my second pair of uh, of these. These are going to be uh, pointing forward as kind of like mouthpieces, like that. One there, and then the other should go in the other direction, as you can see. See, it's pointing forward, and this has to be uh, has not. Uh, this has to be not as long as the other one, as the two others, like so. So they are. I hope you can see that. Again, cutting off these, like so. Then I'm gonna take my bead chain eyes. I'm just messing around with the light here. I'm gonna take my bead chain eyes and I'm gonna attach them where my tying thread is now. Or maybe a bit further behind. Something like perhaps there, I think. I'm gonna tie these down with cross turns of the thread. See, so you have the eyes on there now, as well. Like so. And then simply just cover up all your, all your tying points and stuff like that with some brown dubbing. Not too much again. Be sure not to use too much of this. Something like that. And make sure that the that the body here is even and if you want it you could add some legs that has you know some bends in them and stuff like that in order to make this look even more realistic than it is now I just I just like these goose bites they look uh, they look fairly good and uh, fairly easy to work with like that and then you go to the other side of uh, of the eyes Did I do this in the wrong order? Freaking hell, I did. <laughs> uh, oh my god, what a rookie noob mistake. I think I can, I can fix it. So, um, I did this in the wrong order, and that's really, really annoying. Uh, but, but, but we can manage, so I take the feather here. And and turn it to be the uh, and then I take the the pheasant to tie it down. And there you can see it from uh, from above. Cut off that. Cut off any of the of the hackle fibers that is not in line, that is not in the right place. Without, of course, cussing the two uh, the two feelers out in front. My feelers here are a bit short. I think they could have been a bit bit longer. And then I'm gonna make my whip finish. And then the fly is done. Of course, you need to to pull out some of the dubbing here underneath with your with your dubbing needle, in order for this to to make this look better. To make it look more alive and stuff like that, but you see here, there you have the uh, there you have the the segmented body, the eyes and the feelers, and and on the underside you have a completely different color scheme. You have the dubbing and the eyes and the two feelers out in front. Well, um, I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, there were some mistakes uh, along the way, but you know, 
well, that's kind of part of the game. And uh, yeah, you know, so I hope you enjoyed it and, uh, and uh, good luck on the water.